Hey good people, Batavia here. We have eight raised beds in the backyard garden. We're gonna walk through what we're growing in them. See you in a few. Okie doke, so quick housekeeping items. Thank yous to those who like, watch, comment, share, subscribe to Be Better Garden. We appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed already, consider it. There's a button below, and if you do, hit the notification bell so you'll be alerted each time I share more hashtag garden joy. All right, so last week we talked about containers. We're growing in over 30 containers in the backyard garden. Check that out if you're interested. This week we're talking about raised beds. There are eight raised beds back here. We're growing all kinds of food in them. Next week we're going to take a venture to the front yard garden. It's exploded over these last few weeks. So we're going to go ahead and dig in. Okay, so we're going to take a look at this bed here. This is one of the earliest planted beds this year. We had some beets that we put in down here, which at least one of them seems to be doing pretty well. Um, I know that there's a lot of shade that's happening with these cauliflower plants. Shout out to the cauliflower plants. They are doing great. I'm going to actually harvest this one today. It looks wonderful. And then I'm going to give this one just a little bit more time. This is the first time I've had success with cauliflower. So I'm super excited about that. I tucked in some lettuce because I had the seedlings. Here are some carrots that go back to like the beginning of April that I sowed. The red or purple cabbage is doing really well. This is, I think, the only red cabbage that I'm going to probably end up harvesting. The ones in the containers that were planted later. I think they're just, uh, they've been struck by the heat that we've gotten. Same story with the broccoli. It got to the point where it formed a head, but it ended up doing this like as soon as I blink my eye. So I'm gonna see if these leaves are still tender. And if so, when I harvest the cauliflower, I'm actually gonna pull these plants and cook up both the leaves from the broccoli plants as well as the leaves from the cauliflower plants, assuming they're both tender. So then I have uh, rutabaga, which is looking good. So this is a longer season crop. This will be most of the summer still growing. Uh, there's some parsnips that are tucked in there that are trying to make their way. Um, clearly they're in a spot where they're not getting a whole lot of light, so we'll see how they do. And uh, again, a little bit more lettuce just kind of tucked in. So I expect to basically get some baby leaves off of that before they start to bolt. The next bed, we have, we have collards in here, some <laughs> cabbage that's just basically stalled out, and then a bunch of celery and some onions. So celery is looking good so far. Uh, first time growing celery. These cabbage, this is all the same white cabbage, and none of them are forming heads. Um, it's just basically been kind of stuck at this size. So I'm going to make the decision and pull it. I have some other like kale starts and some things that I uh, started from seed some weeks back that I'm going to end up transplanting inside of here to see how it does. There's enough space, I think, from these plants, these collar plants over here to allow what I put in here a chance to grow. So we'll see about that. My collars are looking great. I'm gonna clean up some of the yellow leaves down there. Okay, so for the potatoes and corn, and I actually have some um, cilantro tucked in here. You can see that down there, kind of around the edges of the bed. So for potatoes, we did a couple of things. Um, the height of this bed is like 11 inches, and it's sitting on the concrete patio, so there's not any more room to go down after those 11 inches. So I planted these back on April the 27th and I cut the bottom out of these buckets because I'm interested to see if I get more potatoes out of this plant that has the bucket and some more soil to grow in compared to like the plant next to it. Um, so these are red and rolling followed by this next row. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> the next row is all blue and then I have, I think it's Yukon Gold is the next. Then we have some sweet corn that's in the middle. This is my first year growing corn. Super excited about what's going to happen with this. It's looking good. And then I'm doing a couple more rows of potatoes. So back here we have store-bought potatoes. I think it goes russet followed by just a red potato. And store-bought meaning they started to chit indoors 
you know, spuds started to grow on them. So I planted them outside and um, they are doing well. They look just as good as the seed potatoes that I purchased from, you know, companies or in stores. So I'm super excited about this bed. And uh, in addition to growing potatoes in containers, we tried them in raised beds to see if the yield would be better. But we didn't give up on potatoes and uh, containers. So we have the strawberry bed. We have some onions tucked in here as well as some celery. Onions and celery look really good. Um, however, the strawberries, this is the third year for the plants. Second year that they've been in this bed. And it's the same story like we're in June. These are everberries, not June berries. Um, and they're just a couple of flowers but not a lot of new flowers, which means not a lot of new strawberries are on the way. And so, I mean, if I'm getting a pint of strawberries out of this bed, I'm lucky. And that's just a lot of space to give for that little production. So I'm not so sure if this will remain the strawberry bed uh, next year or the year after, but we'll see. So far, we'll take what we have, uh, keep an eye on it. Okay, so this bed is kind of in the shadows right so this is morning sun um, and it's not really reaching this bed so we'll probably get afternoon sun over here but so far I have some lush turnip leaves the roots which is what I was growing them for really haven't developed to be sizable but it's gonna be enough for me to probably cut up and roast so I'm thinking I'm gonna end up pulling at least these two since they have such lush leaves and I'm looking at like this you can see how small that is like that's you can see it between my two fingers there um, so actually let's go ahead and pull it so this really hadn't had a chance to develop yet um, and I'm not convinced that if I left it in the summer that it would so I'm going to add this to the pot of, of greens that I'm cooking, the cauliflower leaves, the broccoli leaves, again, hoping that they're still tender. I am going to add these in as some mixed greens and give these peppers a chance to really grow because um, there are some bell peppers that are going to need some room in there. Okay, so inside of the cage, maybe we have tomatoes, lettuce, and peppers. Um, this here is a surprise tomato. It was a, one of the transplants that volunteered when I brought the container inside in the winter and so I just nursed it along. Um, we have a boxcar willy. I bought this transplant because I mean that's kind of a cool tomato name. And then I have an early girl here. And then I have all kinds of lettuce. This is black seeded Simpson. It's all bolting. This is still tender. Uh, it hasn't gone bitter yet. But this is limestone, which I probably won't grow. It's the fastest to bolt, and the flavor immediately changes. But I do have some peppers tucked in here. So my work this weekend is going to be pulling out lettuce, um, tossing what I can't use, and then um, washing up and getting ready to store just for the next week or so the lettuce that I can use. And I want to give some space to these peppers that are in here. So that's a sweet pepper there. Um, I think I'm supposed to have another pepper in here somewhere. Yep, that's another pepper there. Um, so we're going to clear out some of this space to give this bed a little bit more growing. Um, these kind of raised beds, they're three inside of the cage, baby. This is four foot across, about seven foot long. Um, next raised bed is the largest I have. This one is again four foot across but 12 feet long and so I've squeezed in a bunch we have a, ch a chef's chef's blend here um, this is a honey comb I think um, yeah honey comb tomato the chef blend is like a mixture um, both just a little bit bigger than cherry tomatoes the honey comb is like an orange tomato and I tried to put the ones that are smaller on the ends just to make them easier to get to Next up, this is where we get into the big slicers. So these all were planted on May the 25th. So they're just like three weeks of growing after being transplanted. But this is a mortgage lifter. It's supposed to potentially get to two pounds as a tomato. Next up, I have Old German, another large kind of reddish slicer. And then let's go around here. 
I have pineapple pineapple tomato this is actually doing really well when I start pulling this lettuce I'm gonna get in here and pull some of the weeds that are growing between the fence and the cage baby but check out some of this beautiful red lettuce um, most of this is either super red or um, marble of four seasons I think but you can see these peppers are just being dwarfed by the lettuce as it's bolting but still tasty so we have another couple of peppers here We'll hope to see some growth once we pull out some of these lettuce plants. We have the last bed in the cage, baby. And again, measures at four feet, about seven feet long. So we have three tomatoes in here. These are our paste tomatoes. I think we start off with the Amish, which is kind of scraggly. <laughs> um, so we'll see how it does. I mean, it looks healthy. Um, next up is San Marzono. It looks pretty good. And then we have our classic Roma. And so, um, if I'm not mistaken, the Roma is the only one that's determinate. Everything else, as far as tomatoes back here, are indeterminate. We actually have a couple of tomatoes up front, too, in the front yard garden. And then, how beautiful is this Paris Romaine lettuce? This is probably one of my favorite lettuces to grow. Again, bolting, it's June but uh, still tender. So I need to really get in here and uh, get to eating, I guess, breakfast salads, lunch salads, and dinner salads. And so then we have a couple of uh, transplants. I bought these two. This is a Gypsy, which I think is supposed to be sweet, and then your Serrano, which is not exactly mild, has a little bit of spice to it. But yeah, things are really starting to take off back here. And as we pull some things out, some of these containers so I didn't go over those but there's some brassicas from the spring and containers as some of those things start to come out we'll get a little bit more room inside of the cage baby yeah okie doke so I appreciate you spending some time with me if you have any questions or suggestions feel free to drop them below and I shall see you all next week in the front yard garden